In his Moonfaker Exhibit B video series, Gerald White claims that the West Australian newspaper printed an article about an Apollo 11 telecast before the event was supposed to have actually occurred. His theory is that the events were pre-filmed for use at a later date, and the West Australian accidentally published the story too early. The article in question appears in the Friday, July 18, 1969 edition of the paper. The headline reads, Apollo soars past the halfway mark, and the article mentions a telecast from the command module showing the Earth from a distance being made on Thursday. The timestamp on the video and the mission logs confirm that this event took place on Thursday, July 17th. The newspaper went to press the evening of the 17th, and the article appeared in the Friday edition, so there doesn't appear to be any discrepancy here. However, Gerald White repeatedly states that the halfway telecast took place on July 18th. None of these sources corroborate this. The newspaper article, the mission logs, and the telecast timestamp all place the telecast on the 17th. So where is Jara getting the date of the 18th? In his Exhibit B addendum video, Jara includes a portion of the Apollo television essay, written by Goldstone engineer Bill Wood in 2005, in which Wood states, On Saturday, 19 July, television viewers in both hemispheres had watched as the crew removed the probe and drogue and opened the tunnel between the two craft. Aldrin slid through, adjusted his mind to the new body orientation, checked out the systems, and wiped away the moisture that had collected on the lunar module windows while the world watched over his shoulder. Jera figures that if the probe and drogue telecast took place on the 19th, then the halfway telecast must have occurred on the 18th. However, there are many problems with this conclusion. First of all, the landing took place on the 20th, and the day before this, the 19th, the Apollo 11 telecasts centered around footage of the lunar surface. The probe and drogue telecast took place two days before the landing, which means it had to have been done on the 18th, and the halfway telecast was on the 17th. But why then does Bill Wood's essay say otherwise? In actuality, a closer examination of the essay shows that it doesn't. Notice how Wood says that on Saturday, 19 July, television viewers had watched. This is a strange choice of words if the event is supposed to be currently happening. If the event was happening on the 19th, shouldn't it actually say, on Saturday, 19 July, television viewers watched? The phrasing had watched puts the event in the past. This is confirmed when one discovers that Bill Wood actually lifted this account from another publication. The text in Wood's essay is nearly directly copied from an earlier work titled Chariots for Apollo, published in 1979. In chapter 14 of this publication, we read, On Saturday, 19 July, almost 62 hours after launch, Apollo 11 sailed into the lunar sphere of influence. Earlier, television viewers in both hemispheres had watched as the crew removed the probe and drogue and opened the tunnel between the two craft. Aldrin slid through, adjusted his mind to the new body orientation, checked out the systems, and wiped away the moisture that had collected on the lunar module windows while the world watched over his shoulder. As you can see, the text in these two documents is identical, except for this section, which is missing from Bill Wood's essay. Wood's publication lacks the important word earlier, which makes it clear that the probe and drogue telecast had already occurred by the time Apollo 11 entered lunar orbit on July 19th. Mission logs confirm that the probe and drogue telecast took place the day before Apollo 11 entered lunar orbit. Because of this editing, Wood's essay could be misinterpreted to put the probe and drogue telecast on the 19th. Gerald White does exactly this, and then uses this false date to shift the date of the halfway telecast one day later to the 18th, and therefore claim that the paper went to press before the telecast occurred. The truth is that the halfway telecast took place on the morning of Thursday the 17th. The newspaper reported this telecast in the Friday edition which went to press Thursday evening. The probe and drogue telecast took place on the 18th. Another telecast of the lunar surface was done after Apollo 11 entered lunar orbit on the 19th, which was followed by the landing on the moon on the 20th. Gerald White's claim that the newspaper printed the story too early is false. Moonfaker, Exhibit B, does not provide any evidence that the moon landings were faked.